So come on down, everybody, and join us if you can. And we welcome to the stage Ed Thompson and Matthew Scullion. Gentlemen, take it away. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Tillion Big Day Challenge. Please start the clock. Today we're going to be producing a billion rows of data. I'm going to start at an instance of the ETL from Redshift straight off the command line. You'll start it slightly different to that. You're going to start it with the AWS Marketplace. The AWS Marketplace is where we exclusively sell Matillion ETL from Redshift. Uh, you can go to our Marketplace page here and uh, you can see we've got a range of instance types available, all different uh, numbers of developers. Uh, if you're doing ETL development in the cloud for Redshift, you can take the continue button and you can be up and running with Matillion. Start doing ETL development in five minutes. I'm going to hand over to Matthew now and we'll just go to B. Uh, Matthew's going to give us a bit of context and tell us about what we're going to be doing today. So hi guys, my name is Matthew Scullion, I'm the CEO of Matillion, joined on the stage by Ed, my CTO. So thanks for joining us today. And the reason we're doing this challenge is really to demonstrate how Amazon Redshift, and particularly we hope in concert with Matillion ETL for Redshift, represent a pragmatic uh, big data platform. There's lots of ways of skinning the cat as regards processing large volumes of data. And each are different for different things. When you just want to get stuff done, you want to ingest data from a variety of sources, do that quickly and without needing high-end engineering skills. And Redshift, particularly with a tool like Matillion over the top, is a really good way of doing that. So what Ed's going to be doing is ingesting a billion rows of New York taxi journey information into a Redshift cluster live in front of you now. We've stood up this from a blank EC2 account. It's built a Redshift cluster and launched Matillion. We'll ingest the rows, build out to transform, and then finally visualize that in Amazon QuickSign. That's going to take, we hope, about 13 minutes and 10 seconds. It's quite likely to go wrong, so um, <laughs> give us your best wishes. But we're, uh, we're going to do our best, and hopefully in 13 minutes' time, we're going to have a uh, big data stack built live from our blank EC2 account, ready to show you. Okay. Ed, do you need more time? Yeah, keep going, I think. Okay, so uh, a little bit about Matillion. Matillion is an ELT tool, as I mentioned, it's available on the AWS Marketplace. Uh, that means you deploy it directly into your uh, VPC, and it works by pushing down transformations onto the Redshift cluster. You can achieve the same thing by handing code, so if you want to start off that way, that's fine. The real advantage is that you can't do that in 15 minutes, or if you're building a whole stack, you can do it a whole lot quicker than two. So that's where we hope the value of the Matillion sits. We're used by a, a range of organizations from some of the world's largest businesses. We have one of our customers sat in the audience here today, Wade Ryan, um, uh, as well as born in the cloud and tech companies that want to aggregate data from a variety of data sources, put it together in one place, visualize it in a DB tool of their choice, or perhaps they're preparing um, data for a data science with them. Do you need more? Now we're good to go. We switch back, please. Okay, so I've got my instance up and running now, and I'm just going to get logged in here. Um, so this is uh, the tool we've started up on the marketplace. I've been ready to go. The first screen that you see in the tool is get set up. Uh, so I'm just going to get started here, setting up the tool for our billion row data ingestion. So hopefully, what you're seeing here in the tool is that's time some of this config is. This stuff is really baked into the data. It really has launched this live from first principles. This wasn't there uh, four and a half minutes ago, but it's already picked up his Redshift cluster and is ready to use, and now he's going to start building our first orchestration job to load that data in about those NYC taxi trips. Yeah, I'm going to load in our taxi data, so we're loading our trips data. I'm going to pull this from S3. We've got some nice tooling to get data directly from S3 using our S3 load generator. This will automatically find a file in S3 uh, so I've got the trips file on the load from S3 here. Uh, I know that's GZIP data, so I can just get a sample. So you can see that's the top of the file. We've got a billion rows of that to go. The tool has picked out uh, what that file looks like. I'm going to OK that now, and that's going to build my, uh, build my uh, components that I need to ingest that data. I should make some slight adjustments here, Matt. Yeah, so while that's doing this, hopefully what you can see is this is a fairly intuitive environment to learn. We find a very low on-ramp as regards to the skills you need to build out one of these jobs. That means that an ETL or data professional can use the tool real easily, perhaps transferring from a, 
and alternative ETL tool, but also business analysts and data scientists wanting to pull data together, mash it up, and then prepare it for downstream analysis can do so easily. Okay, that data is now ingesting. That's going to take a couple of minutes to ingest. While that's doing, I'm going to create another orchestration job. We're going to bring in another data set to work with here. Uh, I'm going to bring in, this is going to be our uh, landmark data. So this is our landmark. So we're bringing it in here now. Uh, this is going to come from an RDS data source. We've got, uh, yeah, as, as Matt was saying, we really uh, uh, put, put a lot of effort into making us uh, really uh, nicely integrated in all the AWS services. So we can get straight to our RDS. It's going to pull out my RDS endpoint. So I've got a Postgres endpoint in here. Uh, I'm just going to fill in the database details to get us connected up to this endpoint. Uh, so, uh, yeah, here we go. So, again, as Ed's filling out the config, this stuff really is happening while we're here. So, we do have a couple of backups if it goes wrong, just so we can carry on with the story. But so far, everything Ed's doing is happening in real life. He's, uh, the, you can see down in the bottom right of the screen that billion row load from the S3 source is running. And as soon as he's finished this next loader job, pulling in the New York landmark data from an RDS database, we'll kick that one off as well and start joining it together. You'll notice Ed is a sporting Matillion branded uh, sportswear, that's because he's got a lot to do and we thought he might sweat. Are you sweating in? Yeah, I've just set up this right in the SQL statement here to pull the uh, coordinates of our landmark data out from that Postgres database. Uh, that's done now, so let's get that running. Uh, and that's going to pull in my landmarks data right away. Let's get on with the fun bit, Matthew. Let's build the transformation. Okay, great. So in transformation, now is the first time you're going to see the genuine power of ELT. So Redshift is a fantastic platform, not only in serving out list of queries, but also in transforming data. We can use that massively parallel architecture and common data structure to transform data at high speed. And then with a two hundred and twenty ETL that we're going to talk about, that's real easy to access and build out transform. Let's get some cal components on the screen here. So we're starting with the calculations. We get into the sort of calculations that you do from BI now. So I'm going to start off, I've got uh, I've got my taxi data, I'm going to work out how long each journey is. So for that we've got all of our redshift functions here, I'm going to use a date function. Uh, we're going to work out the number of minutes between the pickup time and the drop-off time. Uh, now that's my first function done. Another function, let's work out the price uh, price uh, uh, minutes and we'll figure out how much that tax journey is costing me. Uh, so we'll take the total amount and we're just going to divide that by minutes. Uh, and if we around that, we'll have a valid function. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it. Uh, right, now I'm going to start setting up the rest of my ETL flow here. So I need some, uh, some, I need some replicate components. So we're going to take our landmarks data, uh, we're going to split that off down to two flows. So we're going to have a, uh, have a pick up landmark and a drop off landmark for those, uh, for those ETL journeys. Just as that's building up with this part of the job, I just want to point out one of the user interface components we have within the team. This is really reflective of the ELT architecture. So you'll notice that as he drags and drops components onto the screen, the border starts out red. And then briefly it goes amber, and then it ends up green. And what's happening now is as he configures the component, it builds a logical view on the underlying Redshift cluster. And then the Redshift query optimizer stacks those views on top of each other, and that's how we do the transform process. There's real big benefits to that. One of the main benefits is you can see the data flowing live through the job. There's no concept of running. And if any of you have used an uh, ETL tool before, you know you build out the first few components, you hit start or play, it chugs for a minute, and then it throws a stack trace when it gets to the first data type error. But that can't happen here because we're looking at the data line and those borders are showing that happening. How are you getting on it? Yeah, you set me off the phone there, Matt, but that's okay. So we've got, uh, we've set up a join now, so I've got a calculation component going into my join here. Um, we're going to call, uh, we're going to um, call that uh, data input there, in terms of our, our trips are coming down the line there into our main join. We're going to join on uh, two data sets. We're going to join up on our, our pickup data set, we'll call that pick. Uh, we're going to join our drop off data set, uh, which we'll call that drop. Now at this point in the uh, Big Data Challenge, uh, Nick, uh, Richard and Dan have already lost their stake on the sweepstake. We thought we would have all crashed out by now. Uh, it's doing really well. So far this is still all live and not made up. 
we don't necessarily recommend building your big data stack in 15 minutes, but hopefully this proves that you can. And that's a real pragmatic alternative to uh, hand coding or, or, or using uh, more complex approaches to tackling this particular business challenge. Okay, awesome. So I've got my, uh, my pickup expression is in now. I'm uh, going to do my uh, drop off expression here. Uh, so this is my uh, drop off attitude. It's going to be between the drop south and the drop north. Uh, the drop launch usually is between the west and the east. It's a good time here. Nearly loaded, so a couple minutes uh, to get the data loading away uh, nicely. There, so I'm just going to finish off uh, the components that I need to get this job done. Right there it is, my data is loaded. Um, so is that billion rows in now? Billion rows is in Redshift. Uh, we just need to process it. Okay, it's going good. So we are doing something that's real similar to what most Italian customers are using on tool for every day. We're taking data from a variety of places joining it together, adding value to it with metrics and calculations, and then outputting it to an analytics ready fact table or dimension table or something to point our downstream technology at. We're going to be using Amazon QuickSight today as our data visualization tool. We're a, a launch ETL partner with Amazon QuickSight. And in QuickSight, you can, um, using the Spice Engine, read uh, S3 data with an appropriate manifest. But you can also read data directly from the ratio, and that's what we'll be doing here today. Okay, so uh, just a little filter in there, Matthew, to uh, take some, uh, everybody's got some tough data in their data set, so uh, we wanted to get rid of some data where the taxi journey was zero minutes long and that sort of thing. So we've just done that. Now I'm just, I'm just getting ready for my output now, so this is, this is the data that's going to go into my output component. So I've got. Uh, so all I really need now is just removing stuff. I've got the price per minute, I've got my pickup, and I've got my drop off. And that's all I need uh, to kind of get this data set visualized. So let's open that, let's wire that up. There is my complete job. Oh, hang on a minute, I need to just give you a uh, table here, no trips. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're done. So uh, I can run that job now. Uh, we are running uh, that Billy Rose through, we are processing that, we're pushing down ETF. One of the nice things about this demo is it shows that we've not had to build too much infrastructure to get this running. So not too long ago, a billion rows of data was quite a lot. We've had one click in the AWS marketplace to spin up a trillion. Just have more clicks. I forgot to show the folks earlier. I've got, I just needed to prove to you all that a billion rows are going in on that trip. So there's our billion and a bit of rows loaded. And that's what the data looks like. I'm going to jump over to QuickSight now. Uh, let's go and uh, build a QuickSight analysis. Um, I haven't cheated here, I've just uh, come on QuickSight. Uh, let's get a new data set in QuickSight. I've got a connection to Redshift, that's not cheating. Uh, I'm going to create a data set here. I'm going to pull the node tricks table that we just created. Uh, there it is. That's getting, getting loaded into QuickSight now. Uh, when you use QuickSight, you can use Spice, so you can do, uh, process against uh, Redshift directly. That's uh, more than adequate for this. We're in QuickSight, we're nearly there. One minute 37. Too quick, too quick, Matthew. You're gonna have time for questions, mate. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's uh, let's do this in quick size. So I'm gonna convert this to a measure. Uh, I'm gonna drop off, I'm gonna pick up. We've got a nice heat map here. Uh, let's get our price per minute on there. Uh, let's just switch that over to an average. Uh, there we have it. We have a visualization that tells us the most expensive tax journey in New York is between Matillion HQ and the Empire State Building. How is that for you? 15 minutes. Not only is that the first time we've done that in 14 minutes, it's also the first time we've done it successfully. So thank you, uh, thank you very much for helping us along. If there's any questions, please feel free to ask them now. We'll bring the microphone around. Failing that, please do visit us on booth 2338. We've got a whole team of people in similarly lurid t-shirts that are dying to help. Many thanks.